In the previous video we looked at food webs and we showed how animals and plants and all these living organisms are interacting with each other and how they're relying on each other for food to survive. Well, what would happen if we took just one of these organisms away? And this could happen through habitat loss or hunting or disease. The population numbers of the rabbits could decline or they could be wiped out completely. Well, a number of things could happen which could change the interactions between the organisms in this food web. The first thing, well, there are no organisms eating the grass anymore, so the grass will grow more. The foxes can no longer eat the rabbits, so they will eat more mice and or blackbirds, so they will switch their prey choices and perhaps where before they were eating more rabbits as they were readily available, they might have to hunt the mice or the blackbirds and the fox may be okay after that, but it depends how many mice and blackbirds are available and it depends how many mice and blackbirds it can find because obviously a rabbit is a lot larger. If more mice and blackbirds are eaten, there will be more blackberries because fewer will be eaten by the mice and the blackbirds. And if the fox were to eat more mice, for example, then you might have more wheat growing as well in your crop field. So by taking just one organism out or just reducing the numbers slightly, they can have devastating impacts on the whole of the food web. Animals will switch their food sources and change their diet and the organisms that they are eating. Now we're going to look at another way that food webs can be disrupted. We're going to do that by looking at a particular food chain where we've got the wheat and then the rabbit and the fox and the eagle and we're going to look at how chemicals can be passed along a food chain. So chemicals are sprayed on crops and they get transferred up the food chain. The animal at the top of the food chain will be most affected as they will consume the highest concentration of the chemicals. This is called bio accumulation because bio means living things and accumulation means building up so it's the idea that these chemicals build up in these living organisms so a farmer sprays a chemical on the crop for example a pesticide and the rabbit will eat the crop and the chemicals will build up in the rabbit the fox will eat many rabbits and will have the chemicals from all of the rabbits building up inside it. And the eagle will eat many foxes and the chemicals will build up inside the eagle. And as we said, the eagle will have the highest concentration of chemicals built up inside it. So the eagle could now have such dangerous levels of chemicals that have accumulated, which means built up inside it, the eagle could now become very poorly or even die. Now we're going to look at a case study of bioaccumulation with a chemical called DDT. DDT was an insecticide used to kill mosquitoes. This was used widely to help against the spread of malaria and it was also widely used as an insecticide on crop fields. Unfortunately, it was a chemical that was passed along the food chain. It was an example of bioaccumulation with devastating effects, causing the deaths of many birds of prey. This, of course, will have a knock-on effect to the whole of the food chain, or more widely, the whole of the food web. Because organisms within a food web rely on each other for food. This is an example of interdependence. And if one of those animals were to be wiped out, as we said, through perhaps disease or bioaccumulation or hunting or habitat loss, then the whole of that food web will be affected. Other examples of interdependence where organisms rely on each other include things such as flowers relying on bees for pollination and birds relying on hedgerows for shelter. So when we look at a complex food web like the one shown here, it's really important to think about how human activity can affect this food web. So if we are hunting, if we are 
building new buildings and destroying habitat, if we are building roads, if we are increasing pollution, if we are getting rid of wild areas and turning that into farmland, if we are cutting down trees, then we need to think of the impact that that will have on every single organism within that food web that have that interdependent relationship and rely on each other for food, shelter, pollination and so much more. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.